I'm here with Rabbi David Kasher, who is the senior rabbinic educator at Keva, uh, a wonderful Jewish educational initiative here in San Francisco in the Bay, and um, also leads the fascinating blog Parsha Nut. Check it out online, Parsha Nut, uh, based on the weekly Parsha. So, um, Rabbi Kasher, I wanted to ask you just to start, uh, what exactly is the work you do and what, is that, what does that mean to you? Uh, great. So I, I basically, in a word, I, I teach Torah. And I feel very blessed and lucky to be able to do that as my full-time profession. I think that's actually strangely unique for a rabbi to be able to say that, that he mostly teaches Torah. She mostly teaches Torah throughout the day. I think most rabbis are occupied in running a whole congregation in the synagogue. And uh, for me, that never happened because, well, I think actually I was never really even intending to. I think I... I went to rabbinical school and to yeshiva um, for the same reason that a lot of people go, because I kind of fell in love with Torah study. And then you go to rabbinical school and you study the Torah. So it's all study Torah, study Torah, and then all of a sudden you finish and you go and you do something else. Uh -huh. Not to say that rabbis don't right. study Torah or right. teach Torah, but I was just afraid of any role that had me doing things other. I, I basically just wanted to stay in that world, and so I tried to scheme a way to do that and eventually found this organization um, that uh, allows me to teach Torah. And what I do is I, we run study groups in people's homes, in, uh, in people's living rooms, often just little circles of learning. And what, we're, what I'm trying to do is to bring some of that experience that we often have in rabbinical schools of this really transcendent um, practice of, of, of learning Torah, at, bring it to the streets, the people, the community. And I, it's just, the fact that I've been able to do it is remarkable, but, but the experience of doing it regularly uh, day after day, week after week, has really, um, it's really just impacted the way I think about Judaism as a whole. And, and that is to say that I think, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think Judaism is our religion, mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense. I think Torah is our religion. Judaism is a big word, it's a big mm -hmm. civilization, it includes a lot of things in culture, and a lot of people think they're cultural Jews, and that, and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to our spiritual practice, for me, Torah is our spiritual mm -hmm. practice. The study of and the doing of Torah. Wow. So Judaism is not a religion. Uh, that's a pretty radical statement. And Torah is the religion. So what does that look like in the real world? If someone embraced this idea that Judaism is kind of a, uh, use my words, kind of a made-up construct to be something broader than what the real essence is, really Torah is the essence. What, what would that look like? Well, you know, I'll start just by saying that in classical Jewish literature, you don't see the word Judaism come up too often. Uh -huh. And they don't speak of Judaism mm -hmm. when they speak of our, our spiritual practice. They speak of Torah mm -hmm. mitzvot, studying Torah and then living it out. Mm -hmm. And so Judaism is what we've come to refer to this historical phenomenon that, uh, that includes all facets of Jewish life, and they're great facets of Jewish life. But it seems to me that we have focused on some of those facets um, and not actually that much on what seems to me the, the core of it all, at least from a religious or spiritual perspective, the core of it all, which is studying the Torah. Mm -hmm. I, I think when uh, the rabbinic movement started in the early part of the, of the millennium, uh, that was their big insight, is that this Torah study could be the very center of Jewish life. And so, you know, in today's Jewish community, we have the Beit Knesset, the synagogue. That's the, that, in America, really became the center of the Jewish community. And that's great. Prayer is, is great. It's, it's one part of Jewish practice, but it's one small part. And, and I would like to suggest that Torah study and, the, and the, the mitzvot that come from Torah study, that's really the practice of Judaism. Mm -hmm. And the way that uh, the synagogue has become the focus um, or other aspects of Jewish life have become the focus of our Judaism, I think is very partial. And there's a way in which I think Torah ought to be more central, mm -hmm. Torah study ought to be more central in the Jewish experience. Yeah, you know, so you talked about the barrier of prayer centers. What are some of the barriers or resistance people have towards really diving into Torah study? Either psychological barriers or practical barriers. Yeah. When you meet people who don't, Engage in Torah study. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that is, and how do we kind of, how do we kind of address some of those forms of resistance? Yeah. Well, okay. First of all, I think that Torah study sounds like it is a purely intellectual experience. It's like going to a class. It's like an academic form of Judaism, an intellectual form of Judaism. And there's truth to that. It, there is this suggestion that 
uh, that this tradition offers that our intellect ought to be engaged fully in our spiritual lives, but it is the intersection of the mind and every other part of the soul that Torah study is supposed to be about. So it's not a purely mm. academic or intellectual discipline. It's really this unique phenomenon which combines the working of the mind with the working of the whole spirit and the whole soul and the, and the emotional, psychological, spiritual part of, of the self. So I think that's one obstacle is that we tend to think of it as this sort of dry academic thing. The other obstacle is that, you know, there's a lot in... Torah, Torah has a bad reputation. The Old Testament people say, and it's all this sort of like heavy... Um, and, and some of the stuff doesn't feel relevant. Uh, but actually the discipline of Torah study, and this I think people do have a sense of, is a dis discipline of questioning, of taking apart, of off it's an interpretive discipline. Mm -hmm. Everybody offering their own understanding and interpretation, it's actually a very open way mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. studying. And so in some ways I think it's, it's much easier to enter into than something like a a, a prayer situation where there are particular rituals mm -hmm. and maybe uh, you sit there and you sit there and people have different ways of practicing and it's, and it's in a different language and we're, we're, Torah study really is a conversation and in a conversation everyone has, has so, so So how far would you go in, in identifying the parameters of what is still Torah study? Mm -hmm. To some, we're sitting studying the, 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 studying the, the Tanakh, we're studying Talmud. For, if you take a, a more radical Hasidic approach, that anything you're encountering in the world or experiencing with a Jewish lens to some degree is like, you know, learning Torah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, what would you qualify or advise to people say, I want to be a part of Torah study in a broad sense. Yeah. Like, what, is that, what does that look like? How, 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 big is, how, how broad is the tent? Yeah, I mean, look, I, just, I did, did just call it a conversation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so a conversation can get very, very big. Uh, what I would say is it's a particular conversation, uh -huh. and it's one that is in dialogue with the beginning of that conversation. So I'm open to, you know, any, to the expansion of Torah, to, to different permutations of Torah, to today's modern literature, culture, civilization, being in the, the, the law. We use the term the Torah when we're talking about the Bible yeah. Moses, but when we just say Torah, we're talking about just this whole discipline, this whole conversation. But I do think that in order to be considered Torah, the one qualification is that it has to somehow be in dialogue with this, with what's come before. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, I don't want to start naming this yeah. author or this yeah. author that yeah. isn't, but you can see that there are ways in which some Jewish literature is drawing forth and re-engaging yeah. this ongoing conversation, and some is just a great Jew that's written a great piece of literature, but it's really not right. in the right. Torah conversation. Okay, so, so I think my last question for you is, what are the advantages to embracing this, meaning I'm a happy guy. Like I live my life, I have friendships, you know, I go to, go to work, I go to the gym, right? I include Torah study in my life, you know, I mean, like I have a broader conception of what Judaism is, this or that, you know. I mean, what are the advantages to really say my religion is Torah and study is a crucial part of my life? Yeah. Well, I want to say two things. One is that I think this is one of the unique contributions that we have given to the, to the sort of wide range of spiritual practices. Same thing that you think about like yoga or meditation, those are, those are, are things that, that bring people a kind of fulfillment and, and, and spiritual wholeness that they, they can hardly articulate. It's just they, they know that when, they, when they're there, they find it. And, I, and I, I think that that is something that Torah offers that that vitality and that sort of unique spiritual wholeness is present in this you have to do it to understand it but it's present in this discipline and I don't think that Judaism has been doing a great job of offering that real pulsing spiritual vitality the other advantage is, is something that I, I started to say earlier which is that to engage in this conversation is simply to participate and it doesn't require you to have a particular opinion or to believe a certain thing I mean you mm -hmm. You, you can even not believe in God and still be engaging in the, in the practice of Torah study and still be really wrestling with these questions. And, and there have been you know, famous atheists in the Torah conversation. Um, and so there, really it, there's this place in this for everybody. And I think that's, that's an advantage that this discipline offers that 
that maybe not every Jewish space uh, is able to offer. Beautiful, beautiful, wow. So uh, if you're in the Bay Area, you should definitely sign up for Keva and learn with Rabbi Kasher. If you're outside of the Bay Area, you should invite uh, Rabbi Kasher to speak in your community. Um, he speaks brilliantly about Torah like he did today, but most brilliantly within Torah, um, not dancing around it, but really within. And most importantly, you should sign up for his weekly Parshanat and read his weekly Parshanat. Brilliant, insightful insights that are accessible and yet still deeply authentic to the religion of Torah. Parshanat.com. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Yeah.